ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the School World Order. I am your host, the Taoist Professor John Kleisig, author of School World Order, the Technocratic Globalization of Corporatized Education. All right, so today I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to do minimal editing so I can get this report out and get on to the next report. I'd like to start recording more frequently. So um, hopefully this turns out all right, but it's probably not going to be as polished as my previous videos. Okay, so the main thing that I want to go over today is I want to review a new robot, a new AI robot that is used for social emotional learning. This looks to be a new iteration of a type of uh, social emotional learning bot that I covered in my book, School World Order. So we'll uh, take a look at that older version of the robot and this newer version. The older one's called iRobiQ and this new one is called Moxie. So basically I just want to show you what is this Moxie thing. Uh, the reason why I want to cover it is because it popped up uh, as an advertisement in my uh, YouTube feed. So this thing is commercially available and being uh, advertised. And so I wanna go over what exactly is it? What does it do? In particular, I'd like to also go over the privacy policies that it has so you can see how it data mines uh, the, the children that play with it or interact with it. Um, I also wanna show you how the AI that you're actually interacting with through the device comes out of GPT. Uh, or the GPT AI out of the Open AI Laboratories, and so uh, you know this is pertinent to the recent uh, uproar and hoopla surrounding uh, all things Chat GPT. Uh, and then I'd also like to show um, a handful of companies that are uh, have been financing this Moxie robot, and show how all of these companies are corporate partners with the World Economic Forum. Okay, so let's start off and just take a look at what is Moxie. So if I could just share my screen here. Okay, so here is the homepage for the Moxie robot company. And you're taking a look at Moxie right here. This is this little blue robot. That is not CGI, that is the actual bot that you're seeing playing with uh, this little girl here. So maybe to give you a, a, a sense of what it sounds like interacting with the children, let's take a look at a clip from a CNN report. Time spent in a physical classroom is about more than just textbook learning. It's a chance for students to engage with their peers, to develop emotional and social skills. Now, a tech couple. So you'll see that they're pitching uh, this Moxie robot in the context of classroom learning and in particular, social emotional learning. Company in California says its robotic companion can assist and support a child's development as well. This is Moxie. And, and Moxie wants to be friends with your child. With its blue body and big eyes, the animate robot was developed by Embody, a robotics company based in Pasadena, California. When I woke up today, the only thing I could think about was dancing. I would not be able to do anything else until I do a morning dance. Here we go. <laughs> Paulo Perjanian and his team originally conceived Moxie as a way to help children with neurodevelopmental challenges, but has since said that any child could benefit from interacting with the robot, which was named one of Time Magazine's best inventions of 2020. So notice here that uh, it's also being pitched as useful for students or youth that have what they call uh, neurodevelopmental issues or disabilities. And actually that is, uh, that builds on uh, this earlier type of social emotional learning robot that's in my book called iRobiQ. And uh, I'll, I'll read you a couple passages from that after we get through this clip, but you'll, you'll see from the passages that iRobiQ was largely designed to help with uh, children who have, um, I believe autism or other developmental, cognitive, social, or emotional um, issues. So largely used as sort of like uh, what they call an assistive technology, and meaning it's supposed to help with uh, accommodations with particular uh, disabilities or other uh, developmental issues, okay? Uh, but notice here that they're also pitching that it can and, and should and, and is going to be expanded for the broader uses of 
social emotional learning for children uh, who do not have such uh, a neurodevelopmental or other cognitive behavioral or developmental issues. Equipped with microphones, a camera, and sensors, Moxie was created with the expertise of technologists, child development specialists, and storytellers from the likes of Disney and the Jim Henson Company. Please share anything you learned today. Great job. All right. Let's do the five times. The Moxie is not a dystopian nightmare. <laughs> the irony of it is that yes, we could easily think of it as, as being a dystopian nightmare, but it's not. It's really a tool that allows us to be more successful in society. Pajanian says that the applications for robots like Moxie are unlimited, whether it's language learning or life coaching. We wanted Moxie to be a friend, a peer, that is a sidekick that allows the child to go through difficult conversations and share these difficult moments and trust that Mox is not going to be judgmental and will help them understand how to navigate through this difficult situation. Moxie doesn't come cheap. Moxie is still... So the premise here is that um, this bot is somehow going to help children with various social anxiety issues and, and other issues with insecurities, et cetera. Um, I, I have to wonder whether or not uh, interacting with, with the robot whatever whatever the student might be able to learn i'm not quite sure that that's necessarily going to transfer to human to human interaction i, I honestly surmise that perhaps it might actually exacerbate uh, the social or emotional uh, anxiety or other issues because the student might be conditioned uh, only to be comfortable and functional in uh than interacting with simulated emotions of a robot as opposed to making the effort to transfer those skills uh, into the human-to-human -human realm. In, in other words, it might make the, the children more averse to interacting with other humans because they might think that, well, when I'm with, hanging out with you know these other human beings, I notice that I have more anxiety and, and they're less accepting of me than Moxie. So it's a lot easier for me and a lot more comfortable uh, for me to just, if I need some social time, some some play time, some interaction time, I'll just hook up my moxie and I don't need to go through any of the extra stresses of trying to learn how to interact with uh, other human beings my age. Well, over a thousand dollars. There's also a monthly subscription cost. On top of that, there are data protection, security concerns. So how did so notice here also they're they're mentioning or highlighting or noting that there are data privacy and other security concerns and that's going to be the brunt of the focus of the rest of this report once we get into looking at the privacy statements. Do you, you convince parents to say go ahead invest in this robot companion for your kid? Data security and privacy has been top of mind for us and we have taken something that would cost tens of thousands of dollars, brought it down to a thousand dollars, and over the next couple of so he, so he just says data and privacy is a top concern of ours and then moves on to the next issue uh, talking about we'll make it cheaper, right? I mean, it's just a, a, a blank assertion. It doesn't tell us how they've taken the data and privacy concerns seriously. They don't tell us any particulars about any firewalls or what data is tracked, what data is not tracked, how long it is tracked, what it is tracked for, whether it's shared with third parties, et cetera. Uh, he just gives you sort of this, this assertion that uh, we take it seriously. Okay, so that's all this uh, CNN clip has to say about Moxie. Let's go ahead and take a look now at uh, AerobiQ. And actually, um, I'm, I want to read a passage from my book about AerobiQ. So my book was published in 2019. And so you can see that these types of social emotional learning bots uh, have been in the making for quite a while now. So there's two passages in which I uh, discuss aerobic cue. The first one's on page 266 and 267. That's a long passage here. Okay, uh, I'll read. The, I'll just read the whole passage actually. Okay, it says an exemplary case study of such a humanoid AI robo tutor can be found in a 2015 issue of the Journal of Educational Technology and society. So this journal is 2015. Again, my book was published 2019, but the journal I'm citing is 2015. Uh, so it says the article entitled The Intelligent Robot Contents for Children with Speech Language Disorder reports that the quote special friend AerobiQ, uh, which is the quote, the most widespread educational robot platform in Korea, end quote, 
is being adopted in classrooms as a quote unquote talking friend to assist quote autism slash MR, which is a, a short for mental retardation uh, children, end quote, who struggle with quote speech language disorders, end quote. Okay, so you can see here, as I mentioned before, that uh, IROBIQ, uh, just like Moxie, uh, essentially or, or for the most part, originally designed to help with the social emotional development of children who have uh, various cognitive, speech, language, other neurodevelopmental, emotional issues. Um, and so the passage goes on and says, the assistive IROBIQ AI is described as, and then this is a whole block quote, and so it starts, uh, it's, it's a seven kilogram teacher assisting robot that is used in kindergartens. The IROBIQ has a maximum speed of 45 centimeters per second. It has one degree of freedom for its arms, two degrees of freedom for its head, and can produce emotional facial expressions ranging from anger, fear, disgust, sadness, happiness, and surprise to more complex expressions. There are six touch sensors in various locations on the robot. Its head, arms, and wheels each have two sensors. Furthermore, there are infrared and bumper sensors, and the torso contains a 10-inch touch screen. The IROBIQ has an image recognition engine for face detection and recognition, uses marker-based AR technology, and uses English and Korean text-to-speech to recognize 80 percent of its 200 words. So um, marker-based AR technology is usually, oftentimes it's used in combination with something like a Google Glass or uh, some other intermediary screen device. And you take a marker, so it might be like a little disc or card or something. It's got a particular, maybe like a QR code or something on it. And you can place that somewhere and in the instance of IROBIQ being the, uh, the generator of the AR, that means augmented reality, it can basically project a particular image, maybe a, a storyline. Notice that we saw in that video that Moxie tells stories. So when Moxie tells a story, uh, I don't know that Moxie is programmed this way, but let's just go with IROBIQ. Let's say IROBIQ tells a story as IROBIQ is narrating the story with its language algorithms. Uh, it could project onto the a, uh, AR, the augmented reality marker, sort of like uh, a 3D hologram of what's going on in the story. And the student would be able to see that sort of uh, three-dimensional hologram type generation or graphics, either through like a Google Glass or some sort of uh, maybe a, a tablet or maybe it could be a phone, a camera on a phone, like some of the, I think that, that I believe that's how the AR software worked for the uh, Pokemon augmented reality game. Okay, so that's just another application uh, for these various social emotional learning robots, in, in addition to basically being able to scan the face, recognize the emotions, uh, and respond accordingly with, with its own simulated emotions. So keep reading this passage, it says, utilizing this infrastructure of sophisticated AI sensors, IROBIQ also carries out clinical and technical data mining of students' biopsychometrics for the, quote, transmission of data for diagnosis and evaluation between parents and experts. So this is the part where they're taking all that data and putting it into some sort of a database uh, that's tracking the student's progress in terms of their social, emotional learning development and their outcomes. The experts might be the people who are working on the algorithms and the uh, perhaps the gamified lessons and, and other modules that are used to condition the student or to scaffold the student from uh, their current social, emotional state to the, to the desired outcome. Uh, and then the parents would be able to see sort of that progress in terms of the analytics and uh, that are stored in that database. Okay, let's continue. So it says, uh, like transhumanist ed tech, these quote unquote human friendly AI ed tech robots will first be advocated for use in assisting students with cognitive, behavioral, and psychoaffective disabilities. This study of IROBIQ's special ed disability accommodations found that, quote, the children learn to initiate conversations with the robot with the emotional exchange of expressions as reported positively. These results suggest the future development of speech language therapist assistant robot. Moreover, adding to the post-human impacts of IROBIQ, this AI robot is also promoted as a quote-unquote helping friend that substitutes human caretakers and replaces them as robo-babysitters that monitor disabled children 
during parent therapist conferences. And then you know, I have a quote here that says, quote, the robot also assists therapists by relieving them of some of the more intensive work as when the therapist and parent meet for counseling because aerobic cue can play with the disabled children autonomically. So it's not just going to be used as a, as a therapist, but also as a babysitter um, to help with the therapy sessions. Okay, and then the last part here says, of course, over time, just like transhuman ed tech, robotic AI ed tech will inevitably creep more and more into mainstream classroom integration until it is employed to boost competency outcomes for students classified as healthy and able-bodied. Okay, and notice that's exactly what this uh, CNN anchor just basically said, right? She said that uh, Moxie was originally designed to help students who have uh, neurodevelopmental and other cognitive behavior or social emotional issues. Uh, but now it is going to be expanded readily to be used for um, students who do not have such uh, cognitive, behavioral, social, emotional, neurodevelopmental issues. Okay. Uh, there's one more passage I want to read in here, and that has to do with, uh, sort of expands on what I said about how IROBQ and these other social, emotional, learning bots can be used uh, for augmented reality purposes. Okay, so this is on page 282 in a little section called Gamified AR Robots. And I'll just read this shorter passage here. Uh, it says, this same article in Education Technology Research and Development analyzes an AI education technology known as Gentoro, quote, Gentoro, which is an example of an AR integrated robot system for children's storytelling activities. Gentoro uses a robot and a handheld projector to enable children to create a story collaboratively, which can be expressed interactively in a physical space. Additionally, this scholarly journal article also examines RoboStage, which is another example of AR augmented robot systems that use, this is a quote, examines, quote, RoboStage, which is another example of AR augmented robot systems that users can take on either physical or virtual characters with authentic scenes by integrating mixed reality technology and robot technology, end quote. One more AR robot reviewed by this article is the AerobiQ. And this is a block quote begins with when loaded with the AR flash robot script, the AR based dramatic play service is activating is activated using the IROBQ robot software platform, which consists of a robot service executor and a robot content player. The robot script is executed by RCP. IROBQ simultaneously executes the robot software platform and the AR library such as paper vision 3D, end quote. And then the passage goes on to say that these AR robots and other AR computer games are comparatively studied to investigate the difference between computer-mediated AR and robot-mediated AR in terms of which are most accurate at, quote, and there's a block quote here, measuring children's perceived levels of the following variables. A, satisfaction i.e. interest in dramatic play and user friendliness. B, sensory immersion, i.e. self-engagement, environment engagement, and interaction engagement. And C, media recognition, i.e. collaboration with media, media function, and empathy with media. Data analysis indicates that children in the robot-mediated condition showed significantly higher perceptions than those in the computer-mediated condition regarding the following aspects. Those being interest in dramatic play, satisfaction, interactive engagement, sensory immersion, and empathy with media, media recognition. Okay, so notice here that things like dramatic play and satisfaction, interactive engagement, and empathy with media, these are, these are all comparable to uh, what are known as social emotional learning competencies. So if you look at something like the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning, or otherwise known as KSEL or CASEL, uh, they have, I want to say, five or six um, cell or social emotional learning competencies that uh, sound very similar to that. I think one is self-awareness, uh, one is responsible decision making, um, things like that, uh, relationship building. OK, so these, are, these would all be social emotional learning competencies or outcomes that this uh, that these AR bots are uh, designed to help with. OK. Uh, but you'll see here in this passage that basically it describes what I had explained about how the AR bot can basically project 
a story onto uh, into, into sort of holographic physical space mediated through some other screen or perhaps wearable device. Uh, and in this instance, it sounds like perhaps uh, it says that they that the children and the robot can generate the story together. So I guess maybe the robot might start with uh, the plot or the setting or maybe a character, and then the, the child can say what the, what happens to the character next, and then the robot can sort of display that with some sort of 3D holographic animation through the AR projector. All right, so let's um, so let's take a look at AeroBQ. Let's just take a look at what it looks like. I found a couple clips of it online on YouTube here. So let's take a look at AeroBQ here. So this is AeroBQ. Unfortunately, there's no way to get English subtitles or captions for this, or at least I'm not able to. But you can see that it's being used in a classroom setting uh, with the children. There it is in the classroom setting again, or at least there's children in the classroom setting where I'm, I'm guessing you're going to see AeroBQ. There it is. It is. I wish I knew what they were saying. So notice, yeah, see, so you keep his little mouth, like it smiles and it goes, oh, like surprised, and, and it smiles when it's happy, and maybe it goes when it's sad. Um, but unlike the the Moxie robot, which is uh, what I've read is modeled uh, after sort of Pixar CGI characters, uh, and actually I believe some of the the, the graphics for the face are uh, based on what we just heard in the CNN report uh, have been developed in partnership with Jim Henson Studios, so basically the people that made the Muppets, okay, and you can imagine that, right, the facial expressions that Moxie makes are going to elicit stronger emotional cues and responses from the children than perhaps it's is this robot, which right, still has, you know, basically, uh, you know, basic smile, surprise, sad, uh, but doesn't have the same level of expression with the eyes. Maybe you saw Moxie kind of one eyebrow up, one eyebrow down, you know, so it's, Moxie does more than just light up its eyes and change the shape of its mouth, right? It, it much more similarly mirrors humanoid facial expressions. <laughs> All right, now let's take a look at basically the privacy policies. So the first thing that's worth noting here is if you go to, if you click on the shop box here, here I'll take you to this products page, uh, you'll see it's $1,000. Okay, that's just for the device. Then you have to subscribe to various other apps that it uses to interact with it. Uh, it's at least one app. I want to say it's it's a it's multiple apps, and I, and I believe that's what the CNN anchor also highlighted. But if we scroll down here, you'll see here what's included. Soft touch robot with gesticulating arms, self-swiveling torso, emotion responsive HD camera, and GPT powered AI. In other words, its ability to talk and respond to the words that you speak is coming directly from the GPT style AI that's developed at OpenAI. Okay, so instead of, you know, people have been experimenting with chat GPT in the, in the text-based uh, format, and it'll, right, it'll type out a response to whatever you ask it. It's the same thing, except instead of typing it out, it's just, it's doing it through audio rather than text, okay? But it's not just that GPT is what is providing uh, the synthetic speech, but the speech that you give GPT that your children are providing it, it's it's using that to refine its ability to scan, identify, and respond to language with its own simulated language algorithms. In other words, by using this thing, you're effectively building, refining, strengthening, evolving the GPT artificial intelligence. 
but don't just take my word for that. Okay, let's actually look at the privacy policy. So if you go to the bottom of the home page, you see this question here. It says, will Moxie spy on me? So you open it up and it says, no, video data is processed locally on Moxie and is used only to create facial expression assessments. Processed locally means video data is never transmitted beyond Moxie. Well, that's, that's good to know. But let's take a look at the actual privacy policy. So if I click it here, it's going to take me, well, I'll just show you. I'll click it here. Okay, but actually, before we look at the, the privacy policy, which is more in depth and more detailed, let's just look at the broader terms of service. Okay, so let's go to the terms of service here. Okay, so here is terms of service regarding the parent app and how it works in tandem with Moxie. Okay, so let's just read this here. So in order to obtain the parent app, you go to Apple App Store or Google Play Store and download the parent app to your computing device. The parent app may be utilized on smartphones or a tablet computing devices. You have to establish your account, including an email address in the parent app in order to interface with the Moxie. You will be asked to enter your name, your email address, child developmental goal information, and or event information, dad's birthday or appointments in the parent app. Okay, so basically what you should gather from this is that anytime you interact with Moxie, it's, it's going to basically take all of that data that it's uh, analyzing, it's going to associate it with this, at least this apparent app account, uh, which is affiliate, going to be affiliated with the email address. Uh, and this is going to enable it to basically create a profile on the child over time by linking it to a particular account that's linked to a specific email address connected to the app. Okay. So the Global Robotics Laboratory site, let's read uh, context here. If a parent purchases Moxie, a parent or child after embodied receives parental consent, may be provided with access to the GRL site. A persistent cookie will keep track of who has logged into the account. You do not own a Moxie and are just visiting the GRL site. The persistent cookie is not utilized. Okay, so that's interesting because then the persistent cookie, if it's only utilized by somebody who's purchased a Moxie, the only way they, they could distinguish between that is if it's taking the data or the persistent cookie and asso associating it with the account on the parent app. So the cookies on the GRL site are going to provide further analytics that will sort of expand the profile that's built around that email address associated with the parent app. Okay, so now let's take a deeper look at the particulars of the privacy policy in terms of the type of data that is tracked and how it is aggregated and analyzed. Here's privacy policy. All right, so let's start by taking a look at what types of data is tracked and collected in the setup phase. So it starts here, bullet number three. What information do we collect during setup of the Moxie parent app and Moxie. So it says no child can begin interacting with Moxie until a parent app has provided verifiable parental consent. Moxie is equipped with a camera, microphones, and other sensors to interact with your child. Moxie captures video and audio of your child. The sensors are utilized to identify if and where other objects or persons may be located in a room or other interactions, such as if a child is touching or hugging Moxie. Embodied utilizes our proprietary AI platform, Social X Trademark, to analyze data, to provide and improve our services, and to develop new content, features, services, and products. Embodied has implemented strong measures to secure personal data to offer your child the benefits of Moxie. Where possible, data is processed and stored locally on the Moxie device to avoid sending personally identifiable information into your cloud. Notice it says, where possible, okay? Embodied takes steps to protect and secure data that cannot be limited to on-device processing during the transmission and in the cloud through encryption and other measures. So uh, notice here that some of this data is not stored locally on the device, uh, and it says that it tries to keep it private through encryption and other measures. Notice here, though, where it says embodied utilizes our proprietary AI platform social X trademark. I should have noted when we went over the products page, when I noted that Moxie is run by GPT-powered AI, they're talking about Social X, right? So it's powered by this form of GPT artificial intelligence. So I believe GPT stands for uh, Generative 
pre-training. So it's a large language uh, model of artificial intelligence. Basically, it's a uh, it's an AI that can, as I mentioned earlier, scan language across the internet and then simulate its own linguistic interactions, right? So in other words, it can respond to language that it is provided with its own simulated language. So right now, chat GPT is the big popular one, but there was other iterations of various GPT, artificial intelligence uh, programs that, that have all been spawned out of open AI. So, so this social X version of GPT AI is essentially an outgrowth of the various GPT artificial intelligence that have been developed at open AI. Open AI uh, was early on, uh, Elon Musk here was one of the co-chairs um, and I believe he also financed open AI early on as well. He was one of the early funders of open AI. Notice here that they sort of elaborate on exactly how their social XGPT AI engages in various behavioral analytics, conversational AI, and analyzes body language, eye contact, and motion. And then it's got this premium curated content, which I guess would be it's sort of its dossier of various large language model responses that it can pull from to interact with the child. And probably also, I would guess, various games, gamified learning projects and, and various other activities that it can engage the child with in order to try to help scaffold that child towards a particular social emotional learning outcome. So if we scroll up a little bit, you'll see here. That's something else that is included in the Moxie robot and is facilitated through this GPT powered social X AI uh, is a hundred plus emotional and social missions, right? These missions are effectively the uh, premium content, the, the missions, the games, the lessons, the modules that is used to condition or train the student to achieve a particular social emotional learning outcome. So if we go back to this privacy statement here. Again, Embodied utilizes proprietary AI platform, the GPT powered AI platform known as Social X trademark. And again, notice that it's not just to analyze the data, but it's also to provide and improve our services and to develop new content feature services and products. Okay. In other words, the GPT powered Social X AI, in order for that thing to be improved, uh, it's going to take the data that it tracks from its interactions with various children. It's going to use use the, that data, the sort of the feedback loop between this, the stimulus and response between the, the child and the AI bot. And it's going to sort of refine its algorithm so that it can have more accurate responses to the child, perhaps more humanoid-like responses, more organic responses. Okay, so let's take a closer look at what types of data the parent app collects. So it says, what information does the parent app collect and why does the parent app collect it? Okay, so it says, the parent app collects information from you to serve your needs, communicate with you, manage our content, allow you to track your child's progress in meeting developmental goals you set, and improve embodied services and products. The parent app may collect the following information. Here. So again, notice here, look, that uh, a lot of the data they're saying it's basically to help you track your child's progress and their development in terms of their social emotional learning goals. Uh, but also it's to help Embodied Inc. to manage its particular content that it provides through its social X GPT AI and to also improve other embodied services and products. So again, the data that it's tracking is not just to help facilitate whatever social emotional learning outcomes or goals you have in mind for the child. Uh, it's also designed to help the embodied uh, company to develop more enhanced products and services, some of which would be facilitated through the social X GPT AI. So to improve those social X GPT AI services and products. So here's a list of some of the particular types of information. So the login information for accessing your account, personal contact information to allow body to contact you, child's first name and birth date, child's developmental goal information that you choose to input 
into the parent app. So whatever social emotional learning goals or outcomes you would like your child to achieve, uh, you would enter in that goal and it would, it would keep record of that and it would help them to develop their analytics uh, in terms of your child's progress towards those goals and whatever content the, the social X GPT AI might need to provide in order to a scaffold for the child to get closer to ultimately achieving those those goals. Other information includes event information such as birthdays of family members or appointments. Um, body also collects information about the device you're using to access the parent app, like your device ID and IP address. We also collect anonymized information about page views in the parent app and about pages in the parent app that malfunction and crash. This information helps us analyze usage and update and improve our services. Okay. Okay, scroll down a little bit here and it says, the cloud server utilizes Google Firebase to generate parent app usage analytics for Embody regarding the parent's use of the parent app, including minutes the parent app is being utilized, which menu screens parents utilize and or other parent app usage statistics. The parent app usage analytics are aggregators for all parents utilizing the parent app. The parent app usage analytics are encrypted and stored in the cloud server. You can read more at this Google privacy statement here. So notice here that by aggregating all of the data across all of the parent users, that they're also engaging in some form of group analytics to extrapolate trends in terms of uh, the various ways in which parents are using the app. So maybe trends in terms of frequency, what are the most popular uh, social emotional learning goals? Uh, what are the trends in terms of how quickly it, on average, it takes for the, the parent and the child to get towards that goal through the Moxie missions. Scroll down a little bit more here. It says, parent app may receive the following information from Moxie about your child once an account is established and Moxie is paired with the parent app. So these types of uh, data points include activity data, such as books read, calculated reading comprehension, calculated vocabulary level, amount of time spent interacting or reading, badges or trophies received, activity patterns, and then also insight data, which includes data generated through the AI engine that provides insights on your child's development progress. This data is encrypted and stored on Moxie as well as the cloud server and may be accessed by the parent app. So the activity data is just the inputs. The insight data is basically the progress that is made towards the goal based on those various inputs in the activity data, right? So in other words, uh, activity data is just saying, how many books did the student read, calculating the reading comprehension level, calculating the vocabulary level at any given point in any given interaction between the child and Moxie. The insight data is gonna be, is gonna take those various data points over time and show how that student has read more books over time. Perhaps they've, their reading speed has increased and right, they're reading Instead of one book a month, maybe they're reading two books a month. And they'll also see the insight data in terms of uh, how the student's reading comprehension has perhaps improved uh, over the trajectory of the various books that they've read over time. Okay, So the, the activity data is basically at the descriptive level. The insight data is at the analytic level, basically uh, extrapolating various analytics and trends in terms of uh, the pace and the speed and the efficiency and uh, at, at which the student achieves his or her social emotional learning goals or outcomes. You notice here under activity data that they also have listed badges or trophies received, which indicates that once a child is able to successfully complete one of Moxie's missions, they will be issued a particular digital badge or trophy to indicate that they have achieved the social emotional learning outcome or goal. And so Moxie is also advancing a, a burgeoning trend in education in which students' various competencies uh, are going to, to be certified with various digital badges. So whether they be social emotional learning competencies, cognitive behavioral competencies, academic competencies, workforce training competencies, uh, the, in order for a student to demonstrate that they have achieved those competencies, they will have a digital badge that will eventually go on a digital ID 
on a blockchain platform, which will facilitate basically a, a permanent record that aggregates essentially a psychological profile of the student that will ultimately be used in a social credit database to uh, permit or restrict that student's access, not just to uh, advancement in the education system, but also uh, in, in their careers and just in the public square broadly and commercial services generally. Okay, so now let's look at some more of the particular types of data that are collected by Moxie itself, not just the parent app. So the uh, software that's embedded in Moxie as opposed to the parent app that sort of is a, a dashboard hub that kind of aggregates uh, the analytics from, from the Moxie robot. So there's a few different categories here. So there's audio data and audio transcript data. There's video data, facial expression data points, primary user images, activity data, which we just looked at briefly a little bit, Moxie interaction data, insight data, which we just touched on a little bit as well, and Moxie sensor and telemetry data. Okay, so let's look at some of the specifics on these. Let's go back to the top here. We'll start with the first category, which I believe is audio data and audio transcript data. So let's start with this one. Let's go ahead and read. It says, okay, so it says, the recorded audio data is encrypted and sent to our cloud service provider, Google Cloud STT, who automatically transcribes the audio files to create audio transcription files and deletes the audio recording after creating the audio transcription file. So this goes back to what we saw in that little bullet that asked, will Moxie spy on me? So let's just revisit it for a second here. And remember here, it, look, it says, very briefly, knowing that most people probably aren't going to bother to read the particulars in the privacy policy, what it says is no. Video data is processed locally on Moxie and is used only to create facial expression assessment. Processed locally means the video data is never transmitted beyond Moxie. So basically, it's telling you the truth that you know it's not it's not going to keep that audio transcript and it's going to just store it locally. And then is when we click on this privacy policy, we see that. Um, that it gets rid of the audio file, but not before it turns it into a text file. So the, the information is still there. I mean, they might not have the, student, the, the child's voice signature in the same capacity or to the same extent, but it still does retain a transcript of everything the child says to Moxie. Okay, okay so let's now let's look at the video data. Okay, so it says the recorded video data will be automatically processed locally on the Moxie device to create facial expression data points. The recorded video data does not leave Moxie, is utilized to create the facial expression data points, and is deleted after the facial expression data points have been created. Okay, so similarly, though, um, in the same way that the audio file is deleted only after a text transcript is generated and stored. Similarly, the video of the child's face will be deleted, but not before the various facial expression data points have been created. So those facial expression data points are basically geometric graphs of the spacing between the child's eyes, nose, mouth, and the perimeter of the face. So if you've ever seen any images of a person's face on a facial recognition camera, and you've seen sometimes that it's the, the whole face is sort of segmented off with various triangles that all intersect at various points between the eyes, nose, and mouth, and that basically if you just remove the person's actual face from behind all those triangles and dots and where they intersect and the outer perimeter, and you just remove the face from behind it, kept, kept that geometric aggregate of triangles and data points, that that would basically be one, one file of a particular facial expression. And then when the ch child changes his or her expression, from perhaps uh, confused to laughing or from happy to frustrated or something and and the eyes and the mouth change the, the size of the triangles change and some of those dots change and then each of those facial expressions is going to have a different file uh based on a different geometric graph of those different facial expression data points and those were, are going to be what is stored in moxie and once those are stored then again the, the child's actual face would be removed but again the ge geometric graph of the spacing between the facial features and uh, and the emotion associated with those data points is then extrapolated.
Okay, so let's read what it says about facial expression data points here. Facial expression data points allow body to determine facial expressions of the child and or analyze the emotion of the child in order to enhance the interaction between Moxie and child. Facial expression data points will be transmitted to the cloud storage service provider and are encrypted during transmission and storage. Facial expression data points are only accessible to Embodied and are not accessible by the cloud service. The facial expression data points may be stored for 18 months. Embodied has access to the information but cannot link it to any particular user, account, or device. Notice here that although Embodied removes any personally identifiable information associated with any of these facial expression data points that it stores, by pooling them all into an aggregate big database, it enables the social X GPT AI to refine and calibrate its ability to identify, recognize, simulate, and respond to specific emotions affiliated or associated with specific facial expression data points. In other words, the more signatures of happy faces that it can store, the more easily it can recognize the full range of nuanced expression across happy faces from one person to the next, right? In other words, because of people's heads are shaped differently and their mouths are shaped differently, those, those geometric graphs of those facial expression data points, there's going to be some variation uh, from one person's happy face to another. And the more signatures, facial expression data points that it can pull together, the more accurately it can identify the full range, the full spectrum of variation across happy faces from one person to the next, from one ethnicity to the next, from one age group to the next, from one gender to the next, et cetera. And so this is going to enable the social X GPT AI to refine its facial recognition uh, and emotional recognition capabilities in a similar manner to which it's able to refine and enhance its large language model processing and responding capabilities. All right, let's look at the primary user images. Okay, so it says the camera on Moxie will initially capture images of the primary user, your child, during their interaction with Moxie. Primary user images are utilized by Moxie to verify that Moxie is speaking to the primary user during conversation interaction and to respond appropriately to the primary user. Please note, during interaction with Moxie, images of other individuals may be captured if they are within the field of view of the camera. Moxie may process these images to determine if this individual is the primary user and may ask, who are you or are you my mentor to confirm? If another user asks Moxie, to remember them, that user will be recognized and information pertaining to that person will be stored. The primary user images will be encrypted and securely transmitted to the cloud storage service provider. Embodied has access to the information but cannot link it to any particular user account or device. And then the rest of this has to do with how the parents using the parent app can access some of this information uh, through, through the app. But notice here, what it's telling you is that although all of the other camera images that we just went over in terms of its uh, facial expression data points policy and its video data policy, those particular facial images are not stored. Uh, it does have to store at least one primary user image, not just a facial recognition data point graph. So um, although it's not going to keep a record of all of the images it takes of your face before your child can you know, wake it up and interact with it, it needs to be able to confirm that it is the child that is associated with the account that is attached to the email that goes along with the parent app. And the way that it does that is by uh, matching the student's actual face with the primary user image that it keeps on record to verify that it's speaking with the primary user. So, so for the most part, it doesn't keep any images of anybody's face, but it does keep this one. So then let's take a look at the activity data, which we already looked at a little bit, but let's see if there's anything else to catch here. Okay, so let's just read through again. Moxie collects certain activity data, such as how long children are using Moxie, if children read a book with the robot, how many missions the children have completed with Moxie, badges and trophies earned, and other information to help parents track a child's general activities and progress. The activity data is generally summary information about the child's activities. This goes back to what I said about how it's just sort of describing or recording input output without any 
insight analytics into progress over time towards achieving any particular missions or goals in terms of social emotional learning outcomes. So let's take a look at the MOXIE interaction data. Okay, so let's just go ahead and read what it says here. It says, MOXIE interaction data is data associated with the child's interactions with MOXIE, such as the audio transcript data collected through MOXIE's microphones, facial expression data points collected through MOXIE's camera, whether and where other objects or persons may be located in a room collected through MOXIE's camera, responses communicated to MOXIE, and or what MOXIE facial animations are utilized. In addition, touch sensors are utilized to determine if a child is touching or hugging MOXIE. MOXIE interaction data is collected and processed on MOXIE and is utilized to enhance the child's interaction with MOXIE and is associated with the AUID. That is the analytics user ID that is the ID code or number that is assigned to a particular account on the parent app. So once you set up the parent app in association with that email address, it's going to give you an analytics user ID. And that user ID number is basically the, the confirmation that you, the parent on the app associated with the email is in fact the parent of the child using Moxie. Moxie interaction data is then encrypted and transmitted to the cloud service provider and stored in the same account as the anonymized insight data, audio transcript data, and facial expression data points. The Moxie interaction data is stored for three months with precise timestamps and for 18 months with relative timestamps. Okay, so notice here that it's telling us that the Moxie interaction data is stored in the same database as the data pertaining to insight data, audio transcript data, and facial expression data points. Apparently then it is only the activity data, which is in a separate database from these other categories. Notice here that this MOXIE interaction data is utilized to enhance the child's interaction with MOXIE, meaning that the MOXIE interaction data is not just tracking the child's responses to MOXIE or the child's prompts to MOXIE and not just Moxie's responses to the child or Moxie's prompts to the child, but it's basically tracking the correlatory dance between both the child and Moxie's prompts and responses to each other in order to calibrate and refine how accurately is Moxie either prompting or responding to the child's language and or facial or body language emotions. And so it's this sort of feedback loop in the interactive data that enable uh, the social edge GPT AI to refine and calibrate its responses to the child and to basically enhance its AI powers. All right, let's go ahead and look at the insight data now. Okay, so it says insight data is data derived from the embodied proprietary AI engine, that being the social X GPT powered AI engine that analyzes how the child is doing in achieving missions and goals, those being the social emotional learning outcome goals or missions and progress toward achieving those goals, such as improvements in language skills, how long the child was engaged with the robot, number of words read per minute. Insight data is just that, is data derived from the MOXIE interaction data, facial expression data points, audio transcript data, and other data to provide an analytical assessment for child's progress. So basically this data is another layer of the algorithm from the social X GPT AI in which it's basically looking at what is the goal that the child is trying to achieve through the mission? And then what are the prompts that the child is responding to towards getting to that goal? And it's how is the child responding to the prompt? So what words is the child using? What facial or body language emotions are expressed during those interactions with the robot and that how do those particular emotional or language responses correlate with the trajectory or the trend towards uh, achieving those social emotional learning goals or outcomes and then obviously once it aggregates various trends from one child to another on the uh, same particular mission for the same particular social emotional learning goal, it can aggregate what are the particular types of responses, either emotional or language, that are correlated with the most efficient and effective trajectories towards those goals. And then it could sort of refine its ability to prompt the student to have those particular emotional or language 
responses in order to help expedite that child's uh, achievement of the social emotional learning goal. Okay. And so again, all of this, all this data mining is effectively to either evolve or enhance the AI's large language model processing capabilities and or its emotional processing capabilities through facial and body language recognition. Okay, so that basically covers all of the most important data mining and data tracking policies that are stipulated in this privacy statement here. Last thing I'd like to look at is who has been funding Moxie. So if we go to this Business Insider article, let me scroll down a little bit, we will see that some of the early investors include Amazon, Intel, Sony, and Toyota. Okay, and if we go to the World Economic Forum's corporate partners page, we can see here that each of those companies is a corporate partner of the World Economic Forum. So if we go down to... There's A for Amazon, then there was Intel, which is right here, then there was Sony, which is right here, and then we also had Toyota, which is right here. Might also be worth noting here that CNBC has just reported a few days ago, May 18th, 2023, that in attendance at this year's Bilderberg meeting, we have OpenAI CEO Sam Altman. And then we also have some key leadership members from Microsoft, DeepMind, and Google. I'm pretty sure DeepMind is a Google. AI. Let's just double check that. Okay, yeah, so DeepMind is connected to Google. Okay, and this is the DeepMind website, and this is a report just about a month ago, April 20th, 2023. Okay, so I thought these last two points were uh, important to highlight because it illustrates that this Moxie robot, which runs on a social X GPT AI and then stores uh, much of its data that it collects in, in various Google clouds that in effect then this Moxie robot, which is also funded by several uh, corporate partners of the World Economic Forum, that this Moxie robot has financial and business ties, not just to some of the largest companies in the world, but some of the largest companies in the world who are either corporate partners with the World Economic Forum, which is running this great reset for the fourth industrial revolution. And Moxie is also connected with companies that have had representatives attend the most recent Bilderberg Group meeting. So the Bilderberg Group being a, a similar style of roundtable NGO, uh, sort of a precursor to the World Economic Forum. And if you read Michael Rechtenwald's uh, The Great Reset and the Struggle for Liberty, which I helped do some of the research for and have credits on, uh, you'll see that there's a table that we uh, put together in there that illustrates that there are at least 67 overlapping memberships between the World Economic Forum, the Bilderberg Group, and several other roundtable organizations, such as the Trilateral Commission, the CFR, which is the Council on Foreign Relations, the RIIA, which is the Royal Institute of International Affairs, uh, and the Club of Rome, along with the uh, concurrent overlapping memberships in various global governance organizations such as the United Nations, the World Bank, uh, IMF, et cetera. And so it illustrates altogether that this Moxie robot, which I just recently got an advertising for, is commercially available, it has been promoted by CNN, is deeply entrenched in this global corporate technocracy network. And so I would wager that we're gonna see this, this Moxie robot uh, is, gonna, is gonna become a very popular thing in the coming years. And I would wager that we'll not just see it being popularized for home use, uh, but we'll see that it uh, begins to be popularized in classroom use as well. Okay, so that pretty much covers everything I wanted to report on regarding the social emotional learning robot. Hopefully, if there's anybody out there who is considering using it with their children, 
hopefully you'll at least rethink that consideration now that I have demonstrated exactly how the Moxie robot will data mine your child, not just to profile your child's social emotional learning status, but also to take that data and to evolve GPT style artificial intelligence, the evolution of which feeds directly into the acceleration of the World Economic Forum's Great Reset for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you'd like to check out more of my research, go to my website, schoolworldorder.info, where you can find archives of all my interviews, all my articles, and a bibliography of all my citations. There's also links to all my social media and video platforms, and you can sign up for my email list too, where you will receive notifications whenever I produce a new article, interview, or video. To support my work, become a research member for just $5 a month, and you'll gain access to my WebBrain database, which contains Charlotte Thompson Iserbeet's archive of U.S. Department of Education files and other rare historical documents. The database will be updated with weekly document dumps and you will be notified whenever I upload a new dossier. Thanks again for watching. Peace.